Dan Schinder here on Drum Talk TV at the NAMM Show 2015 in Anaheim, California. And I'm honored to be sitting here with Mr. Roy Burns, a very good friend and someone who I'm honored to know and have spent time with on our show. How are you, Roy? Well, not bad for an old man, you know. <laughs> you know, first of all, congratulations on 35 years of Aquarian products. Um, in today's day and age of the global business economy, I think that's a really big milestone. Has it gone by quick? Well, it, a little quicker than you might think. When I look back, I think, well, that's been quite a while. But we're very proud of the fact that we were able to survive in a tough market, in a tough economy. And we're doing new things, new products. So I'm excited about that. And you've been coming to, this blows my mind when I heard this. Roy's been coming to the NAMM show for 55 years, since 1960. I was a studio drummer in New York City in 1960. So I went down to see the people from Rogers Drums and worked out an endorsement arrangement. And that's what got me into this side of the business. And that was 1960. So uh, I've seen a lot of changes. The first booth that I went to to see Rogers Drums was a hotel room with the beds moved out. It wasn't a convention center, just a hotel. Wow. And you know, if you think about it, since 1960, it's a completely different world. There was no color television. FM radio hadn't really been developed yet into music formats. We hadn't even been to space. I mean, it's a different world. Well, when I told my wife's uncle before we were married, he said, what are you going to do to make a living once you're married? I said, I'm going to play the drums. He said, oh, good Lord, man, I'm talking about making a living. I said, I'm going to play the drums. He said, well, good luck. But it all worked out. It worked out pretty well. Since you've been coming to the NAMM show since 1960, can you name like two or three of the biggest things that you feel have evolved other than the sheer volume and I don't just mean sound volume the DBs but the volume of exhibitors and you know what has really changed what has it done for the industry well the scope of products is much broader many more new items I think uh, items were introduced at the NAMM show that might not have gotten much attention but just the sheer volume of it, it you tell someone about the NAMM show and you wind up saying it's kind of overwhelming, but it's still the best show of this type in the world, I think. The people who run it are very helpful. They treat the little companies great. So uh, unlike some of the other shows where there's no security or there's no help if you have a problem, the name people are really terrific. I, I can't say enough good things about them. And they've managed the growth thing very well, you know. And they still have time for the little guys like me, you know. Oh, that. Do you like coming to the show? Do you enjoy it? I'm beginning to. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. And you're probably getting the hang of the routine and, and just how to deal with it all, right? I'm getting an idea of what's going on, yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. If you don't mind me asking, can you give us a little peek behind the curtain of what's to come from Aquarian in the next year or, or beyond that? Well, the development of our in heads, which is an electronic drum head that no one else can make, we're developing that and the accessories that go with it, which will make it quite a system. We have the new on heads, which is a pad that's electronic, and we have the new super pads, which are acoustical pads, where you lay them on top of the drum and you can hear the pitch of the drum through the pad. No one else has ever been able to do that. So those are three or four things. Plus we have some accessories, like a muffling dot that you can put on the drum and take it off and put it back 300 times and it still works. Yeah. We, we're just experimenting with that and we'll have that on the market in a few months. So we're busy. You know? That's great. Last question. What would you tell a drummer of any age who wants to come home to their significant other or even if they don't have a significant other and just in their own mind they want to say I want to make a living at playing the drums what are the first steps they should take other than being a good drummer number one is you have to be willing to learn as much as you can while you're young because you're only young once and you only get that chance to learn so you should try to learn everything even if it's not your particular style of music or preference learn everything you possibly can so that when you're 30 you've got the tools to do something yeah. you don't want to be a hit at 15 and a has-been at 19 
you know, you want to have a good long career. So I'm a learning nut. I, I mean, I'm always, I, I say I give myself the permission to graduate to learn more new things. So I try to learn something every day. To this day I do. You know. But learn all you can while you're young. That's the best advice I can give anybody about anything. Great. Well, hopefully you'll get something out of that and apply it so that you really can get something out of that long term and for the big picture. And Roy, I want to thank you so much for having us here again. Well, my second experience with you, I got to tell you, the first one was great. So was this. Uh, thanks, for, yeah. thanks for coming to visit Aquarium. Yeah, absolutely. And our 35th year. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for making us a part of your showing here and uh, looking forward to seeing what's coming in the next 35 years. I hope you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining Roy Burns of Aquarian and myself, Dan Schindler, here on DrumTalkTV.com. Thanks. <laughs>